This is Referees World with Darren Cullum and Richard Mellon. Hello again and welcome to the Referees World podcast. My name's Darren Cullum and I'm a Level 5 referee affiliated with Somerset FA. And this is PGMO Observer and Southwest Pool Observer Coordinator, Richard Mellon. Rich. Hi, Darren. You're looking very dapper. It's a very nice swept back hair. You don't have to make an effort for me, you know. What does dapper mean? I'm dapper? Sure. Well, yeah. just funky, sort of, you know, you're oh, looking funky. on yeah, top yeah. of it all. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll play funky. <laughs> Brilliant. So, if you're a first-time listener, thanks very much for finding us, by the way. You can subscribe, and don't forget, you can listen in the following ways. On the website, refereesworld.co.uk, click on the Listen tab, and then you can subscribe to the feed. You can listen on Spotify, just search for the Referees World podcast, and you can listen via iTunes podcasts as well. Just search Referees World, and then click subscribe. So, over the next 20 minutes or so in this episode, we're going to go and do another little review on a recent game of my and Rich has made some little voice notes for me. We'll play you those voice notes so you can hear what it is he's going to be picking holes in me about. And the 20 minutes starts now. Now. This is Referees World with Darren Cullum and Richard Mellon. Right, OK, Rich, so we've got 20 minutes to cram this in. Uh, let's start by playing the notes that you made on that game that I did recently. Uh, I think this was my, my fourth game back after four years of being away. So listen carefully. The quality is not great because of the weather and one thing and another. So hopefully you'll be able to get some ideas from what he's saying here. I got hit in the face with the ball. You stopped play correctly, but your restart wasn't correct. You, gave, you allowed a, a, a blue team to have a free kick on the floor when, in fact, technically it has to be a drop ball. There we go. So that was about a restart. Let's talk about free kick positioning, which was already mentioned, and cautioning technique. Free kick positioning. So it looked like a penalty kick for me. Foul uh, on the left-hand side of the box. Very positive and good signals. And... Uh, Finally, now do you see the importance of the happy half? The happy half. So there we go. We've got four things to talk about. The restart with drop ball, free kick positioning, uh, caution technique and the happy half. Uh, Rich, let's start with the drop ball restart. Yeah, um, drop ball restarts. um, Sometimes a little bit contentious uh, in the view of some players. But when you're considering injury to a player, well-being there is an expectation that the referee will stop the game. The position in where you stop the game obviously is an important thing. Uh, you know, it's um, with, with the phase of play directly in front of goal, would you actually stop play there? That's, that's certainly not recommended, but try and find a, a neutral position, a safe place uh, where to stop the game. On this occasion, um, you stopped the, the game because the player got hit in the face. I mean, he was about five... Or ten yards outside the penalty area, mm-hmm. uh, and it was a close, um, close proximity shot that hit him directly in the face, and it wasn't it wasn't particularly nice. No, it wasn't but, pleasant. But he, he he did go down, I think, didn't he? He did. He went down like a sack of spuds, and when it happened. I let the play continue, but I turned around to check to see if he was okay. And then it became quite obvious that he'd been hit in the face quite hard because he was holding his face in his hands. And um, I just felt that we needed to stop because I wasn't quite sure whether or not he was injured at all. So that's what we did. Yeah, I like the fact that you included that uh, he got hit in the face. The phase of play that happened next is the ball went forward. It went uh, on a little bit further and you looked back. I think mm. as part of our refereeing, we should always look back after a challenge, uh, whether it be um, a, a physical challenge or a bod- aerial challenge. And in this case, um, a player being injured, uh, always look back uh, when the phase of play is going forward, when it's safe to look back as well. Mm. But look back quite quickly because, you know, you never know what you might pick up, a late challenge, a late foul, uh, and then you're able to sort of raise your credibility, raise your profile for the right reasons. So we dealt with the player. Mm. Uh, The player Mm. left the field of play and we restarted. But from memory... I thought I did a drop ball, but um, clearly I didn't because you picked up on it. (laughs) Uh, Well, I I picked up on it. And the the other thing I I want to say to you is uh, the the fact that the player was injured and the player knows that he has to leave the field Mm. of play. So, uh, you know, didn't have to talk about anything like that, but just the the surprise from what's expected. And and players will get these vibes as well because I think we've had a little touch on this uh, restart already, haven't we, since you came back about uh, drop ball restarts. The drop ball that we talked about in the previous episodes was when the ball hit me as the referee yep 
Okay, so there, there's another example of drop ball restart. Uh, and the drop ball restart um, to the team that had possession at the time of the stoppage. Uh, and make it safe, don't make it complicated, uh, and drop the ball to the team that had the ball. In this case, it was the Blues. Uh, I can't remember which team was Blues and which team was Reds that day. Um, but uh, it's a case of drop the ball, not a bounce up, uh, just drop the ball to the player uh, and the player may uh, take it forward from there. In this case, I think it was the goalkeeper, wasn't it? He mm. dropped the ball to, yeah. uh, who t- just came outside, advanced uh, outside the penalty area uh, and the opposition were four metres away, weren't they? Mm-hmm. You know, compliant with everything that needed to be done. But like I say, the fact that you, that you allowed the goalkeeper to take it as a free kick is technically wrong in law. Okay, so that's your drop ball sorted. I got that one wrong then. Uh, next one is free kick positioning, Rich. You picked up on this. Yeah. Um, what, what I want us to do on, on the podcast is not to be seen to pick in fault. Um, the fact that Darren got the uh, drop ball restart uh, incorrect is, is a simple piece of um, observation uh, and it's not meant there to be critical of um, what a referee does. I don't believe as an observer I'm there to be a fault finder. I'm there to be a support uh, and I'm there to be a help uh, to um, for everybody to enjoy the game, whether your participation is player, manager, spectator, referee. It's there to help the game of football and the profile in the image. So uh, I don't want people to think that I go there looking for fault. Uh, that's not my role. I'm there to support. Well, if you don't. Um, point these things out where you're going wrong, then you're never going to improve, are you? Yeah, because uh, a bit later we'll go into routines and good mm. things about that. So, uh, you know, it's 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 all about confidence and, uh, you know, the, the fact that you're trying to convince people you know what you're doing. And, and that's all it comes down to because for sure there's a chance that uh, that, that uh, goalkeeper last week uh, who took the free kick didn't uh, have the drop ball, will say to next week's referee, well, that's not what we did last week. Mm. Last week's referee, let me take it from the ground. Uh, and that's where people will talk at start talking about inconsistency. So we, we need to be mindful about how we um, project uh, our role and uh, deliver expectation. So on with the free kick positioning then. Mm, okay. So delivery of free kicks from the right-hand side from the left-hand side. Let's talk about the right-hand side on this occasion because this is where I drew the uh, observation from. The r- right-hand side free kick outside the penalty area, about 10, 15 yards outside the penalty area. The assistant referee on, in place on the right-hand side you took a position up with your back to the goal line about eight, ten yards uh, from the goal line on the right-hand side. I would like to have seen you take a position up uh, 180 degrees different to that position. So I was way out then. <laughs> in a roundabout way. It, it, in, a, in, a, in a short route, yeah, yeah. I, I would like to have seen you uh, out on the edge of the penalty area or nearer the pen, edge of the penalty area. It all depends how close the, the ball is uh, being delivered to the pen, into that next phase of play. I just felt that in that position, I, would, that I didn't have anybody behind me so I could just get uh, a view of the whole of the field of play. But okay. like you say, it does mean that the likelihood is I'm going to miss any potential incidences which take place during the melee when the yeah. ball comes in. You can try and convince me that you had a good reason to be there, but, <laughs> but I've, I've got a recommendation yeah. for yeah. you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. what, I, what I want to say is when, when there's a free kick on the right-hand side, um, as referee, look at the delivery. Will it be by the right foot or by the left foot from the player taking the free kick? The the trajectory of the ball, the um, delivery will be different. If it's a left foot coming in from the right-hand side, it's going to be more directed at the goalkeeper and directly across the face of the goalkeeper at the far post type of thing. As opposed to by the right-hand side, it's going to have a little bit more swing out away from the goal with it. So consider those positions that you need to take up to help you observe uh, detection of foul play, if that's the case, or not detection of foul play. You know, it's not a foul, it is a foul. So it's all about your credibility. So where would you suggest is probably the ideal position uh, in a free kick such as that? Well, I gave you a clue when I said you were 180 degrees out. Where do you think that would be? Uh, I'm thinking probably uh, on the edge of the 18-yard box yes. goal area. Yep, that's where I want you to be. Mm. Or if it, if the penalty, sorry, if the free kick is a little bit tighter than that area, you're going to need to come back from that position. But what I want you to think about is your viewing options. You know, make sure you give yourself the best option to view 
uh, and detect anything that might be going on, pushing, uh, pulling, uh, those sort of things. If the ball's going to be delivered to the far post, where do you think you need to be? Near post position, far post position. Always give yourself options uh, and consider the position that you start is not the position that you will finish. OK, if the ball is delivered left footed from the right hand side into the penalty area towards the goalkeeper at the goalkeeper in the six yard box, there's likely to be some sort of melee. There will be a coming together of players. So consequently, standing static 20 yards out, just watching is not very good because the players are continually moving. They're creating different angles. And if we're not moving to find the, the optimum view, then we're going to stand still and miss things. So my recommendation is don't stand still. Just move a couple of metres left, right, forward, backwards, mm. whatever is needed to help your viewing options. And then obviously when the players see you moving and getting closer to the area of play, then they're going to probably not sort of get themselves stuck in, as it were. That's the, that's the theory. Um, I like to say, when the ball's delivered into the penalty area, there are uh, skirmishes going on, there's challenges, there's scrappy bits of play, uh, and the ball may not come out for a, for a couple of seconds, like, you know. But what you're doing is, because you're recognising the phase of play is going to be held up in that area, you move in and you'll cr you create a presence. Create a physical presence, posture, demeanour, all stand upright and deliver a decision. You deliver a decision, whether it's a goal kick, a corner kick, a free kick or not a free kick. Let the phase of play go. But what you're giving yourself is options uh, to support your profile and credibility and let people see you know what you're doing. And don't be too mixed up in the players because mm. if you need to get out, because the ball moves outwards towards the other goal, then you need to be in a position which means you're not going to get tangled up in everything as well. Good shout, good shout. Don't don't squeeze play too tight. If you squeeze play too tight, you are likely to get caught in the stampede, um, collide with players or get hit by the ball. So your, your judgment, your proximity to it, I would always ask you to think about 10, 15 yards in, in that sort of situation. Uh, during active play, when play's a little bit more open out in the midfield, we can't always achieve that 10, 15 yards. So let's let's target 20 yards. You know, th there's a little bit of difference there, but you can see what your work rate will do as regards supporting your mobility around the field of play. And of course, it gives you that credibility as well. Absolutely right. OK, so our next point is uh, cautioning technique. Mm, OK, <laughs> OK, OK. Um, Give me, give me your background to the... We only had one caution that day, didn't we? Yeah, I was expecting a lot more, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. I, I came to that game because I knew on paper it had the uh, chance to be a little bit of a choppy game, chopsy game type of thing. Um, the, the, the home team were a little bit notorious with their reputation uh, and the away team certainly don't lay down for anybody, uh, not from my memories. Uh, but on this occasion... They were very respectful to one another, mm. and, and I can only commend both of those teams that day. And we were playing on a three G pitch as well, which and it, a it windy was, day. It was a windy day. It was mm -hmm. a nice. It was a nice pitch to play on. Yeah. Okay. Very so nice. you anyway. had reason to caution a player. So I had to caution the away team captain. Uh, the caution was for persistent infringement. He was one of those that I had to manage through the game because he was a bit chopsy and mm. he could have gone in with some heavier challenges at times. And, and I, I communicated with him well and he responded well, to be fair. But after about five or six times of talking to him, I just felt now I need to caution him. Interesting, uh, interesting. Uh, Let me stop you there. I know exactly what five you're going to say. Five or six oh, times. No, I think four or five times. <laughs> I take it back. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I had to caution him. And my cautioning technique is I have my book in my back pocket. Mm -hmm. And in my book, I have my yellow card and my red card. And obviously, I did what I did. And whilst I was stood there, I took the yellow card out of my wallet and held it up, which... It, it, in reflection, does look a bit old school. It doesn't look cool, and it's it's yeah. a bit it sort of slows down the pace of the game, doesn't it? I I, I my personal uh, view of watching referees is that I want them to look organised. I want them to look professional uh, and simple routines. That's what we're talking about here. Uh, and I just say to you. Where do you have your cards? We've talked about this a couple of times uh, on the podcast. Where do you have your cards? Where do you keep your red, yellow? Where do you keep your book? 
etc etc mm. i mean there are places where not to uh or pockets there are pockets not to put your, <laughs> your book in because if the ball were to hit you and it does happen it, it can be a little bit painful mm. so don't put your book or your pencil in your top pocket because that's where you you know your chest is and you know if the ball hits you from five or six yards and you get a whack it does hurt and there's chance of injury so all i would say is put your pen, your book in your back pocket uh with the pencil uh but left and you uh, sorry left and right uh, <laughs> you're getting yourself confused yellow now, and brilliant. red yellow and red cards talk to me about that Dar. so yellow and red cards what where they should go yeah yeah um well like i said i usually keep them in my book but based on previous discussions we've had about this I think you'd be quite keen to see me have my yellow card in my left-hand pocket mm. and my red card in my right-hand pocket. Red, right for the remove of play. Yellow, uh, what was the phrase that you use? Yellow, yeah. leave on the field of play. Yellow, left. leave on the field of play. Yeah, left. R, remove. Remove from That's the field it. of yeah. play. So. But you're not, you're not comfortable with that, are you? I can, no, I can no, detect I... that. So... How, just, do you, how do you find these habit. routines then? As a referee, how do you find these routines? That's a question to our listeners. How do you find out about these routines? Well, I suppose, I suppose, well, you need to, you've got to practice it. Oh, you? you've got to practice. On so. Come on in. So when you're at home, <laughs> oh, no. am I allowed to introduce the, the theory of Kerry is delivering you a cup of tea? What, you're now asking me to show Kerry a yellow or red card. Are you for real? Come on. You if, know I won't If that cup of tea that. is not up to your <laughs> expectation, you know, I'm not sure what you normally uh, you know, deliver on uh, for a cup of tea. I said, but this is not acceptable and show the yellow card. Oh, my. Could you get away with that? No. No, probably no, You know that. that. You know what, that what I'll about, end up on what the about, streets. Uh, what about practising cautioning technique with, with the children? With, with the kids, because we're yeah. telling them off all the time, so yeah. that's probably a good idea. Okay, so think about what you're going to say. Think about how you say it and think about your delivery. Because, like I say, it's not always what you do, because everybody knows when a yellow card is shown, but it's how you do it. Because your profile is hugely uh, raised. You're, you know, you, you've, you're, you're well up on the radar of everybody because you're delivering a, a sanction, whether it's a yellow or even more importantly, it's a red card. Because like I say, it doesn't feel nice as a referee when you're delivering yellow and red cards early in your career. Mm. You know, it becomes good routine as time progresses and you get used to it, players expect it, etc., etc. So consequently, all those things that we need to learn need to be done pretty well at home in many cases. You know, practice what you're going to say, how you're going to say it, um, and the manner in which you're going to deliver it. Look, you know, I wouldn't say look at yourself in the mirror because that is old school. <laughs> but, you know, when you're delivering a sanction, when you're delivering an admonishment, think about what you're going to say. Don't wait until the day of the game to get out there and experiment with your cards. Mm. Oh, where did I where did I put my card today? Where's my left? Oh, Rich has tried to tell me to deliver it differently. I don't know where my cards are. I can't remember. I'm not going to do that again. It's all about practice away from the field of play, not when you're live out there in a game. And the final one on this episode of the Referees World podcast is the happy half, which is a phrase I've never heard of before until that particular game a couple of weeks ago. Just tell me what the happy half is again. In all those years that we've known each other, I'm surprised yeah. I've never mentioned or you've never heard me mention the happy ne half. Never heard it. I've done that so many times. And I'm quite surprised at you. In fact, I'm appalled oh, at you, Rich. I'm old school. <laughs> <laughs> so the happy half, to explain yeah. what it is. Yeah, the happy half. And this, I, I'd just like to say, this is a brilliant tip. This is just one of those little simple things. And if you're a new referee mm. or you've never heard of the phrase before, this is a great one to embrace because it can help you. Yeah. Happy half. Okay. Let me give you a simple scenario. A goal is scored. Mm -hmm. Where do you go next? Normally, what I would do is once the goal has gone in, I'll just stand there just to make sure nothing kicks off. I'll mark in my book who scored the goal and then I'll head back. However... Okay, that's that's fair enough. I, I, I understand it's that. It's not wrong. No, it's not wrong. It's not. Um, but all I want to say is the happy half is the team... Who've just scored. Have just scored. So where are they? They're heading back to their end of the field. So ideally, what you're saying to me is don't get yourself caught up with the team mm. that have just had a goal scored against them. Get out of their way just in mm. case they use you as a target. There's a couple of things to think about. Uh, and simple ones as well. Um, when a goal is scored, sometimes the game can be a bit uh, frantic and um, a player will follow up the ball in, that's gone into the net and um, 
he'll have a little bit of argy, argy bargy with the goalkeeper. It's my ball, it's your ball. No, it's not. It's, it's you know, et cetera, et cetera. It goes on. So I want you to keep an eye, eye on that situation in case there is a, um, an alt- a minor altercation between the goalkeeper and the number nine that's trying to pick the ball out the back of the net uh, and the goal line is quite tight. If everything is safe, then why do we sit, stand halfway uh, between goal line and, ha- and halfway line, the centre circle, and chalk goal into our book? Why do we do that? We're making ourselves an easy target for somebody who doesn't like conceding a goal. If he thought, that was a free kick that led up to that goal, or there was an offside that you didn't give as a referee, he is not going to turn around and say, excuse me, sir, I think you were wrong. He's going to tell you in other ways that you were wrong, and he'll be rude about it, and what you'll do is you'll take a sanction against him. So I say, look after yourself, support the game, help the player by not standing there and making yourself an easy target. Get and back it, to the happy half. Yeah, and if that player then decides to run and chase you up to the halfway line and then give you a load of lip, then obviously uh, things are a little right. more serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, and there's every chance if he's going to do that, you're then going to call, uh, create, uh, give a sanction. That's clearly seen as dissent because the player has travelled 20, 30 yards uh, from, from a position in his own half to contest you know, and dispute with you the, the fact that you've given a goal uh, and you've got, uh, you know, uh, every right, I think, every if that's the right description, every uh, opportunity to say to the player, "Hey, I don't know normally what you get on up to uh, when uh, when you're playing." I said, "But yeah, as a referee today, you're not going to say that to mm. me, and you're cautioning him. Mm. That that will be it." Um, and strangely enough, having not heard of this phrase before, two days after I went to a local league game, uh, Southern League game, Taunton Town, my hometown, against Truro City, and uh, that same thing happened. The keeper. Uh, Truro City keeper thought that the ball had been kicked out of his hands for the goal to go in, but it wasn't, mm. you know. Mm. Um, and the referee, who we both know, hello, Rich Lawrence, uh, he was there just obviously taking notes, putting the scores, and the keeper went over. And then a couple of other players joined him. It meant in the end that the keeper got booked. Okay. So th- there's my point about, you know, I- I'm not saying we shouldn't caution uh, players who show dissent. But we do put ourselves on the front line and put our head into the lion's mouth when we don't take proactive uh, action. And proactive, I'm saying, in this case, if a goal is scored, there's no, no, there's no harm in getting back to the halfway line, into the happy half. Do it. If you need to stay close by to, to the, um, the previous area of uh, action, then also consider that, I know. But don't stand there in the uh, unhappy half Chalking goal in your book mm. because you will become a target for those that want to have a, a, a chops at you. Uh, and I'm disappointed that referees are still doing mm. it. That's my view. Well, it's not something that I'm going to do from now on because <laughs> I've learned. And that's the whole idea of the podcast is to offer education and training tips for referees of all levels. And that's the end of this episode. By my clock, we're looking like around the 20-minute mark, Rich. So uh, thanks very much for listening today. Just a reminder, you can listen online at refereesworld.co.uk. Just click on the Listen tab, subscribe to the feed. You'll get notified when the next episode is released. And we release them now every week, every Friday night at 5 o'clock. You can also listen on Spotify search Referees World Podcast and iTunes Podcast as well. Just do a search for Referees World and then click subscribe. The download is complete. This is Referees World. Listen online at refereesworld.co.uk or search iTunes for Referees World.